we have a projectile motion question here. A ball has been hit from A to B, 25 meters per second, so there's an angle of 15 degrees above the horizontal. Models of particle, just gravity going on, 10 meters per second squared. That's the slight variation to normal, because normally we take it to be 9.8. And the other variation is that instead of it sort of going up being on level ground, it's ultimately going down by four meters. Determine the time taken for the ball to travel from A to B. So what we do is we split the motion into its components, vertical and horizontal, because there's, there's acceleration vertically, there's no acceleration horizontally. So the speed horizontally becomes 25 cos 15. I turn the 25 into the angle, that's how I remember it, or you can remember that it's the adjacent. And then the vertical is 25 sine 15. Just to say quickly, how else could you get that? Or how else did you learn it originally? Well, sine 15 is the opposite, this thing here, divided by 25. So you just rearrange it, it must be 25 sine 15. It's the ball traveling from A to B is moving at a constant speed horizontally. But it is basically just, you can almost just see it as moving up and down, but with this speed 25 sine 15. So for A, I'm going to look, first of all, I'm just going to look at the vertical motion, in fact, and I'm going to apply SUVAT up. So up is positive. The S is going to be minus 4. It's basically just moving down by 4 ultimately. And then U is this. 25 sine 15 and a is minus 10. That is everything we need. We can now use s equals ut plus a half at squared minus 4 is equal to 25 sine 15 times t and then plus a half at squared so minus 5 t squared. Rearrange that to 5t squared minus 25 sine 15t minus 4 equals 0. And we can put that directly into the quadratic formula. So it's a minus. I don't need brackets here. I just put them to, I put the brackets in just to indicate that I wasn't doing sine of t because when you write sine of 2t, for example, without brackets, you're also doing sine of, you're doing sine of 2t, not just sine 2. Whereas here, I just want to do sine 15. I think that's clear. And then this one is going to be minus 4. So we got t is 1.7509. It's going to be a second solution. I think it's good to state it. Minus 0.4568. So that corresponds to, to this part of the curve here, but it's when time is negative, it's not a physical solution. And therefore, we've got t equals 1.75 seconds. We're then asked to determine the horizontal distance of B from A. So now I can do the same sort of thing, but look at SUVAT horizontally. Apply it um, to the right as positive. And what we get is the acceleration is zero. So the initial velocity is 25 cos 15, and the final velocity is that as well. That's the time. Is going to be this time from before 1.7509 and therefore I'm running a bit out of space but i can use s equals ut plus half at squared but the a is zero so it just becomes displacement is velocity times time 25 cos 15 times this 1.7509 Might as well use like the exact answer. So I'm going to store it into my memory A. 
I wonder if it comes up as answer as well. No, it doesn't. So the time times 25 cos 15 gives 42.282. Or 42.3 meters. Okay, brilliant. The C, we're asked to determine the direction of motion 1.5 seconds after the golfer hits the ball. So I've again got my vertical and horizontal parts, so I'm not going to add that on there, right? But 1.5 seconds after the golfer hits the ball, it took 1.75 to hit the ground. So maybe it's around here. The direction of motion. So, oh, I know what I'll do. I'll draw a triangle like this, and that is going to be my direction of motion, that point below the horizontal. So what I need to be able to do is find my horizontal and vertical velocities at that point, draw a little triangle, and then I could find the overall speed and well, actually what we want is the direction of motion here. Okay, well first up then, horizontal. In fact, this is very easy because there's no acceleration and therefore the final velocity is the same as the initial velocity. Remember we had 25 cos 15. So we remain with 25 cos 15. That's gonna go here. Right, this leads us to the vertical. Uh, still going to apply to that up, I think. U is again 25 sine 15. A is going to be minus 10. And we're told the time, 1.5. The only thing that's missing is V, so I'm going to use V equals U plus AT. And it's going to be minus 10 times 1.5. Actually, that's just minus 15. I'm expecting this to be negative, by the way, because the halfway point would be, it's not symmetrical because I, I'm actually going down by 4, but still the halfway point is going to be about half of 1.75. So I get minus 8.5. 5295. So if I just add it as the speed, it's going to be 8.5295. Now I can say that, okay, if I call this theta, then tan theta is my 8.5295. All over, I've just kept this one exact. be careful I could have used the fraction button you do have to be careful if you divide and you need a bracket here to show that we're dividing by both so 0 0.3532 19.454 So the direction of motion is going to be 19.5 degrees below the horizontal. You could work out the vertical angle and say to the vertical, I think it's just a bit better to say horizontal. Bit easy to understand. Finally, state one factor that could, oh sorry, I missed that bit here. The horizontal distance from A to B is found to be greater than the answer to part B. 
state one factor that could account for this difference. So I I put uh, wind, like it could be a windy day. So um, wind, I think that's all we actually need to write. And if it was a windy day, it's going to obviously go further than uh, otherwise would. But the answers mention also using a more exact value for gravity, because actually gravity is a bit less, 9.8. So that could also do it. And they also talk about um, top spin and back spin. In fact, the answers say no consideration of spin on the ball. All right, well done on this question. Brilliant.